and the accelerometer capacitive sensing. We want to convert acceleration to capacitance, then convert capacitance to voltage output. Okay, this is the whole idea. Now we are still doing the capacitance to output this DAC converter. Okay, CDC, capacitance to digital output converter, CDC. Then, now we are under AD7747. This is a PCB board. It has IC, it has filter, it has converter, it has voltage supply, reference voltage, it has everything there. So we can just use this one to do experiments. So, see this is the schematic of this AD7747. Competitance to digital output converter. Then, see, mains accelerometer, capacitance, capacitance. We have capacitance input, capacitance input. If we have two capacitors, one increase, one decrease. Okay, this is the setup. Then enter this one, and this is the converter. Sigma delta converter, AD converter, from analog to digital. Then we have a filter, then this is the interface, I2C interface to the PC or to the outside world. Then voltage reference to keep the voltage at a constant level. Okay, so this is what we will discuss in this case today. But AD7747, we must have a ground. We must have a ground. So this one, we must have a ground. If your capacitor is not grounded, we cannot use AD7747. We should use the other like 7745 or 7746 for floating capacitors. Floating capacitor means not grounded. I mean, what is floating capacitor? Not grounded. Okay, so we have this sigma delta. <coughs> this is ADC converter. So for the detail, Army should be an expert, but we are not going to the detail. We just say, yeah, analog to digital converter. Then we need to have a filter to get out of, get rid of the noise or high frequency signal. We just want the right frequency signal. Also, on this PCB, we have a temperature sensor. So it's good, you can measure the temperature too. Okay, so this is the converter done. So the capacitance CX is what we want to measure. So for this, we can use we can, we can measure one capacitance or two capacitance. If you just want to measure one capacitance, you can leave the other one. Just open there. But what's important is this, the shield, SHLD. See, if we don't have this shield, we have paralytic capacitance. But if you have this shield, this setup. If you have this shield, say if this is one 10 volt, sorry, if this is three volt here, and if this one three volt, three volt, if they have the same potential, means 
there is no capacitance between them. So this way we can protect this wire without any periodic capacitance. So see, this is excitation signal, goes through here and goes here. See, from this excitation, square wave comes to this end, also comes to this shield. So this wire and this shield have the same voltage. Remember, if you have a capacitive capac capacitor, means they have different voltage. Then you have the capacitance. If they, the two plates, have the same voltage, then there's no capacitance. Great. I mean, could you read this one? Uh, square wave excitation signal is applied on the CX during the conversion and the modulator continuously sample the charge going through the CX. The digital operator process the modulator output, which is a string of 0s and 1s containing the uh, information in 0 and 1 senses. Okay. So if you design a PCB board from your main sensor <coughs> to your circuit, this is a wire. You need to draw a shield wire here and here. And this one and this one should have the same potential to protect this wire. So if you are going to draw a PCB, you need to draw the shield, shield wire. Hello, what's your name? Quincy. Quincy. Uh, is it an emergency? <laughs> okay. So, uh, what's your name? Leo. Leo. Leo, could you read this? The AD sensor holds the natural capacitance between C in and ground. That means any capacitance to ground on the signal pass between the AD sensor holds the C in pin. And the sensor is included in the Okay, so what we want to measure is this one. But because this is the north, we, make, we get the capacitance. So not only CX we got, we also got the capacitance here, somewhere here. They will enter this north. Okay? So we have periodic capacitance. We don't like it, but they are there. So the periodic capacitance, because for mains is picofaraday range, the periodic capacitance is also in the picofaraday range. They have the same order. So this is the trouble. We really, really worried because. What we measure is not going to the mains capacitance. What we measure is going to be the periodic capacitance problem. And for this one, because the main sensor is going, we have vibration, we have motion, we have temperature variation. So this periodic capacitance is not a constant value. It is dynamic. It is drifting. So we cannot just do the calibration in the beginning and uh, minus this offset and say we are fine. We cannot do that. We need to have the dynamic method to shield this main capacitance. So, uh, what's your name? 
Yes. Ming Jun. Yun Jun. Did you read this? Ambient. Ambient. Humidity. Humidity. Et cetera. effect is not a constant value, it is dynamic. So this is why if we, if we buy this boat, it takes care of a lot of things. So it has the, this excitation, it has this shield node for you to connect to the shield. So, so this boat, it has this it has these pins, SHLD. So you have the HLD pins. See, we have four pins C in plus, C in minus, ground, and uh, SHLD on the PCB board AD7747. So you need to connect the SHLD node to the shield wire. Okay, so probably this say okay. So this is important. We need to if this is the main sensor, this is our circuit. We need to put them as close as possible because if they are too far away, we are going to pick up more calotitic effects. So this is important. Keep this in mind. So, yeah, locate the PCB board as close as possible to this capacitive sensor. Then, so, Yun Jun, uh, what's your name? Yu Qian. Yu Qian. you read this? Yeah, just keep keep them close, as close as possible here. Then you need to shield the PCB board, the PCB track. So we have a PCB, we put our sensor, we have a wire, we put them on the PCB board. So this is a PCB board, this is another PCB board. So on this PCB board, you need to shield the PCB track, the wire. You can shield the track to the C in P. So this is the track from main sensor to the C in P. You need to create this shield wire. So shield the PCB track. So we, we, we don't use shielded cable. If you just have this sensor and you use a shielded cable, connect the sensor to the C in P. This shielded cable is shielded, then you don't need to worry, but we use a PCB board, so we got to protect. Okay, so we have some examples to shield the sensor. 
So if it is a sensor, you can put a shield, ground plane, to protect this sensor. So we call this coplanar. Coplanar means they are on the same plane. But uh, this is not our case. Our case is this, looks like this. So this is the signal. This is the signal. And this is the shield. So this is the shield, and this is the signal. So the signal wire and the shield wire just go parallel to each other. And uh, the shield wire cannot be too close. If it is too close, remember, the capacitance is epsilon A divided by B. B is the gap between the two plates. If the D is too small, then probably if the potential is not exactly the same, if D is very small, then you are going to create an additional capacitor with a very large capacitance. So yeah, the, the gap should be maybe two millimeter. It cannot be too small. So the rule of thumb for this gap, you, you can use two millimeter as the gap between the shield wire and the wire, two millimeter, maybe one millimeter, but it cannot be smaller than 0 0.5 millimeter. Okay, so in this schematic, we have two capacitance, one increase and the other one can decrease. So if we use this, in this case, we use two CE, CE1, CE2, and this is a shield. So they also, they need to be connected to the shield excitation signal. Then the, the range for this to read the main capacitance, it should be plus minus 8 picofaraday. So this is the range, measurement range for this board. But uh, we can change that because this PCB board is configurable, means you can you can adjust some inside settings to change this plus minus 8 picofaraday measurement range. So if you read the manual, it will tell you how to do that. Okay, so this is a differential PCB. So the differential here So inside 7747, we have CAP, DAC. We have one capacitor connected to this one. We have another programmable capacitor connected to this one. So it has capacitance, this one. This one also has capacitance. So in reality, at this node, before we come to the converter here, we have CE. We have this CX, suppose this is CX, we should minus this one with this node. And at this node, we have CY, CY, and we should minus this one. So this is the real, what happened in reality. Okay. Your name, Actor Ming Jun. Yun Jun. Yes. Could you could you read this?
okay, good. So if you just use one CE, then the other one should be open circuit. Then the software configuration, you need to set this register equal to one for single ended measurement. But although you don't use the other one, but that one should be shielded anyway. So you should also guard the unused C in input. So your wire, on the, always, anyway, the connection, the shield connection should be connected to both C in plus and C in minus, no matter you use it or not. So for single ended, it, it the measurement range is from zero to eight peak of wear day for single ended case. But you can change this. You can change you you can use software to change CAP DAC to change the measurement range. You can go higher, go lower. Okay, so in this, you want to do 0 to 16 pivot period for single ended. You can modify this one and this one. You can set the value of this one to 8 pivot period, set this one to 0 pivot period. Remember, what we measure is CX minus this one then minus, there's no C1, so here, and minus zero. Yeah, this is the setup. And another setup, if you want to measure 20 pico per day, you can change the value here, this way. So those are the single ended measurement, but if you have two capacitors, one going up, one going down, in your main accelerometer, then this is the setup. Yeah, C in plus, C in minus, and C X C Y. Yeah, you can change. So if you don't use this, if you don't use this, then the C X minus this one. Cx minus this one, this is zero. So Cx is eight. And the C1 is this one. And Cap DAC minus this one all means zero. Okay, so you can do the mains by yourself. Okay, now, this is a schematic, schematic to tell you, although we have a shield, but uh, between the shield and the ground, we have periodic capacitance. So the wire here, we have periodic capacitance between the shield wire and this wire. And uh, between here, between the wire here and the ground, we have CP1. So in reality, we have a lot of periodic capacitance parallel to main capacitors. So they are the bad guys. We want to get rid of them. So active shield is important. So, for example, CP1, two capacitors in parallel, the total capacitance, we just add them together. So, CP1 plus CX enter this wire, input wire. Then, we need to do 
calibration anyway. Although you have the shield, but uh, before any measurement, you need to do calibration. It doesn't matter which kind of measurement. Electrical measurement, calibration. Mechanical measurement, calibration. Because we always we have offset. We have temperature drift. We have a lot of uncertainties. So even you use mechanical, you use the laser sensor, optical method, you also need to calibrate your device. And another device has the self calibration. So remember to do the set of self calibration before you run your experiment. Okay, Kaiser, would you read this? An offset calibration might be sufficient to compensate for a small terasitic capacitance. For a larger terasitic capacitance, the CLP DSC can be used to compensate, followed by an offset calibration to ensure the full range of eight picofarad is available for the system. Yes. So before you do the measurement. Offset calibration important because if you have zero mains capacitance, the output should be zero. But uh, before you do the measurement, it has some value, say one picofarad. So you need to do offset calibration. You need to set the output to zero to remove this initial offset due to CP1 effect. After you, you do the offset calibration for single-ended, the output should be from 0 to 8 picofarad. But if the output is not, if the output is from 0 to 7 picofarad, means you need to use the software to change your output from 0 to 7 picofarad to 0 to 8 picofarad. Make sure we have the full range measurement. Master, could you read this? Other parasitic capstances such as CP2 between active shield and ground as well as CP3 between the sea engine and shield could influence the conversion result. However, the effect of parasitic capstance of type CP2 by CP3 below 250 picofarad is insignificant to the CDC result. Okay. So we don't need to worry too much about CP2 and CP3 because even their values as high as 250 picofarad, it won't influence your result. So they are they have minor and um, important influence. But not only periodic capacitance is an issue, we also have periodic resistance. Because as long as you have wire, you have any medium, they have resistance. So that's why we need to put the PCB, the main sensor, as close as possible. If you have shorter wire, then you have smaller resistance. So periodic resistance also affect our result. Because they have the current, if you have any capacitance, see, capacitance, capacitance, current, you know current follow resistance, so current will go this way, current can go this way, current can go this way. So this is what we care, but if current goes this way, it's going to influence our result. So this is what leakage currents means the current leak. So if you have water, you want to use a container to take the water to run point A to point B. But if there's a hole, 
at the bottom of your container. When you reach point B, maybe all the water is leaked. The same leakage current, the same, they will influence our result. Sorry, yeah, please, here. Greater than. Greater than ten. Mega ohm. Mega ohm chances and offset error in in the CD result. Okay. So the periodic resistance are P one because current leaking leakage current. Current is the same as charge. Charge in motion is current. So if we have leakage current means we also we have leakage charge. So they are kind of capacitance too also. So if the RP1 is too large, larger than 10 mega ohm, it will cause a large error. So that's why we need to keep the wire as short as possible. If the wire is short then the resistance will be smaller. Uh -huh. Could you read this? So, if the RP1 is not greater than 10 mega ohm, if it is smaller than 10 mega ohm, still it causes problem because it will cause the error, gain error in our circuit. So remember, offset calibration is important. We try to do our best to remove all the unwanted effects, influence our measurement result. Okay, then the RP2. I mean, could you read the first? So, parenting resistance RP2 between shield and ground, as well as RP3 between the C in P and the active shield, cause a leakage current, which affects the CDC result and is seen as an offset in the data. Okay, so RP2, RP3 also. There are problems. So, observe calibration important. Then, this RS from our main capacitor goes to this CE node. We have wire, so we have parallel resistance here. So, this is RS in series with our main capacitor. So the series resistance should be less than 10k ohm for us to get the right result. So 10k ohm is specified by this uh, manufacturer of this circuit. Don't be too large. It cannot be larger than this value. Okay, so this is everything about calibration. So we are going to go through the detail, but if you need if you need to use it, then you need to read the detail of this offset calibration. Uh, 
and we have the internal temperature sensor on this board. So they use, so see, we have this BZT, we have a transistor. This is bipolar junction transistor, BZT. So this BZT, this is emitter, uh, this is base, this is emitter. So base here, emitter here, this is collector. So the voltage between the base and emitter, the voltage between base and emitter is a function of temperature. So we use this principle. If you measure this one, you know the change in temperature. So this is the principle for the temperature sensor in this case. Again, we are not going to the detail because this is not our focus. Then, this is the evaluation board we got. See, it has one, two, three, four. Four node, C in plus, C minus ground. Shield, here. Then we use USB cable to connect to PC and our, also our power comes from this USB board. So this is I2C connection. So we won't go there. And this is software configuration. So, so kind of if you need to use it, read the detail. Okay, schematic of the evaluation board. Now, we finish the introduction of this evaluation board. Then we have several case, case studies. Several authors, they research about the sensor. They use this evaluation board. So, next, we are going to continue with this one. So we will have a break till 2.15. So please come back around 2.15 and we can continue. Okay, see you later. For this example, we have a sensor, and this is electrode. We have button electrode, and this is main sensor. Then we have screws to support this floating electrode, and these are anchors. Then, so this is this one. Say so your hand. You can put your hand here. You can push this electrode down. Then the capacitance will be different between this top electrode and bottom electrode. So this one is a sensor to sensing the force you applied here. See, this is the substrate. We have another So me, why we need to arrange our ground this way? Why we want to arrange our ground this way? Okay. Why we don't just put the ground here, ground here? Why we want to put the ground this way? It's the shield, 
SHLD, we use the shield to protect the device. So any any voltage here, this is the ground. So if there's no ground here, this voltage and this voltage, we have capacitance. Capacitance, positive capacitance. If you have a ground here, positive, negative. So you remove the periodic capacitance. So this is the reason, this is a shield. Also it's a ground. Do you understand? Ahem, do you understand? You can refer to him later. So suppose you push this probe in this direction, you move this floating, this main floating electrode now, and this is spotted electrode. So the capacitance will be different. So you can sense the FZ in this configuration. In this configuration, for FZ sensor, you need to wire the four button electrode together. Because for FZ, but it's for this one, FX, then this one, capacitance increase. This one, capacitance decrease. So you want to sense FX, you need to wire your button electrode this way. So group A, group B, so group A will capacitance increase. Group B capacitance decrease. Or capacitance increase, capacitance decrease. So you have C plus C minus. So on your PCB board, you need to have this configuration. You also need to have this configuration. Yujin, do you understand? No. Do you, do you understand this one? No. Do, do, you, do you understand this one? But do you understand this one? No. Okay, for this case, this is the button vector. So button, but uh, we connect them together, they have the same voltage. And this one, the same voltage. So say zero volt, three volt. You move this this way, apply force FZ. You move your top electrode this way. So the distance decrease. So capacitance increase for this case. But in this case, you apply a force this way. So this plate now move this way. Then the distance in, uh, decrease means this one and this one, capacitance increase, and this one and this one, capacitance decrease. So for you want to measure Fx, you need to wire these two electrodes together and wire these two electrodes together. Okay. So this is their setup. There is a sensor here. Here. So there is a sensor here, and uh, it's in the. So this is a probe, 
or sensor here. But this one is uh, okay. This one we use the actuator to move to move the probe and CCD camera to take the photo. And this is a circuit board. We have the amplifier, we have processor on this circuit board. And this is a circuit board here. The circuit board here. So this is a PC. We have this actuator controller. So it's important you need to when you design your device, you also need to think about how you are going to do measurement. So in order to do measurement, you need to have the floor. And you need to think how are you going to move the floor. So they want to use P piezoelectric manipulator. And also you need to think about this is your device. You also need to think about your circuit to take your signal out. So everything is connected. You cannot just focus on your device. No, because that's not going to work. Think about the experimental setup and the equipment you need. Otherwise, how are you how are you going to get the data? So Keep this in mind. Think globally, not locally. Okay, in this case, they also use AD7747. The AC shielding is important because you need this AC shielding to eliminate the periodic capacitance. So you got to use it. And uh, this is their circuit and their sensor. Their sensor here. But uh, from their sensor to AD7747, they use a shielded cable. But in your case, you use PCB then you need to design your shielded wire on your PCB. Okay. So, Ami, could you read this one? Shield cable is used as signal transmission line between capacitive sensor and AD7047. Okay. Then you look at this one. So not only we need to protect our device from periodic capacitance, we also need to avoid any electromagnetic interference. See, we have one one zero volt everywhere. Electricity, sixty hertz signal everywhere in your surroundings. You want to avoid those, so any current is going to create electromagnetic field. Those electromagnetic field is going to couple to your system. You will see 60 hertz, 120 hertz, 180 hertz, so a lot of noise will come into your system. So they use this metal shielded enclosure, a metal container to close, you will put everything inside and there's a metal container to remove the electromagnetic interference. I mean, what is this? What? Which one? This one? This one? Huh? Which one? Can you read it?
Okay, so for the measurement, the y-axis is the output capacitance, peak of Faraday, and the x-coordinate represents the displacement. So in FZ testing, you push your top electrode down, go down, then the output capacitance is going to increase. So see, x your approach, FZ distance, you push down and the capacitance increase. And what your approach is the fx means fz this way, fx this way. And so you increase this area. So this is this is axial. This one is radial shear. So see the output six picofaraday to seven picofaraday. So yeah, because for the single sided single ended is from 0 to 8 picofaraday for AD7747. And this one is the offset value. See, offset, then increase, increase. For any measurement, you need to consider nonlinearity. See, your measurement output is going up, down, up, down. So you, 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 in MATLAB, you can use a, a line to fit the result. And uh, you can calculate the nonlinearity. Nonlinearity is defined by this one. The deviation, you add all deviation, divided by your measurement range. It's a nonlinearity. But in any software, MATLAB, it has the function for you. It will calculate nonlinearity for you. And sensitivity is the slope of this fitted line. So you need to calculate sensitivity, picofaraday per micrometer, and the nonlinearity in terms of percentage. Percentage of your full range measurement. So, what's your name? Okay, Wenji. Kunji. What is nonlinearity? Leo. Okay, what is nonlinearity? Okay. Okay, so this is another case. So in this case, it's also it's a sensor. It can sense the FZ and the FX, the normal force and the shear force. Okay, so this is the device. Again, they use capacity sensing. So this one is the button. This one is the top electrode, button electrode. So this is maybe PDMS polymer, maybe. So top plate, button plate, and dielectric material. So, okay, so this is the, say, top view. This is the side view. Look from the side. So, means this one, and means this one. C in class. Okay, this one is also C in class. Or C in minus. Okay, so this one is C in class. This one. 
and this one should be C minus they use AD7746 remember 7746 for floating capacitor not grounded capacitor so they need to have a reference so this one is not main capacitance because this one is fixed but this one can move this one can move but initially they have the same capacitance before testing so for example if this one increase this one decrease in C means you move this way this one go down this one go up so they have three connections C in plus, C in minus, and this, the excitation. Okay, so 7746 for floating capacitors. Then this one, this one the connection to the excitation so the excitation source 32 k hertz square wave so one trace from the sensor connect to the excitation signal and the other one connect to the CE so on the 7746 for example this one connect to C in plus and this one connect to the excitation excitation node 7746 has two it has C in it has two say C in plus C in minus and floating but for 7745 it only has one C in plus and uh, the excitation okay Yunjun could you read this one So in general, compared to others, your English is good. But uh, do you understand this one? Not at all. Leo, do you understand? No. I mean, do you understand? No. Okay. Okay. So for this seven seven four six, this is their circuit board. 7746 has an evaluation board too but uh, now this one is not to the ground this one is to the excitation and this one is to so if this is a button plate button plate this is a top plate so button plate is not connect to the ground it's connected to the excitation because this one for floating Capacitor. Floating capacitor means it's not grounded. Then it can measure the capacitance between this plate and this plate. So
So it just so yeah. If this one is grounded, or this one is not grounded, but it doesn't matter. We always we always measure the capacitance change. We measure the capacitance change of this node and capacitance change of this node. We use capacitance change to get the either force signal or acceleration signal. So just this one can be grounded. If this one is grounded, you need to use AD7747. If this one is grounded, it's connected to this excitation, we use 7746. But when you do the software configuration, because capacitor, we have RC, so we have time constant for time response. So we need to consider the, the time, the RC time constant. So any converter need convergent time. So you need to, to set enough convergent time for your output. So you can, yeah, you know what's your capacitor value, what's your you can just make a guess. The time constant should be long enough to pick to to get the transfer response. So if the transfer because for resistor and capacitor, if this is time, this is the response. It may take some time to reach the steady state. So if your measurement time is too short, you are not going to get the value at steady state. You are, not, you are going to get a value somewhere between zero and the final value. So you need to allow enough conversion time to get the final value. So if you don't know the conversion time, you can plot your transient response. If you have this time transient response, you know what's the right conversion time you need to set in the software. Eugene, do you understand? Okay, Ami, what's the purpose for these two competitors? Kyler, what are the purpose of these two competitors? Your name again? Yu Chen. Why do we need these two competitors? So, this is power supply. So, why? Uh -huh. Why do we need these two competitors? Yes, so this is DC power supply, but we may have AC signal somewhere we pick up. So AC signal will go to the ground. It won't get to the VDD. VDD is the circuit, we need VDD. But VDD is DC, DC. So any AC signal, need to, we need to remove them. So this is for DC coupling. I mean, are you awake? You tell me, you tell me. Okay, for 7746 data sheet, you will get conversion time, output data rate, and the noise, 
mainly for your for the operation of AD sub seven four six. Okay, we'll skip this one. If you use AD7746, you need to read the detail. Then, yeah, sensor linked to the CDC chip AD7746. It has two CBC chips and uh, connect to USB connection to the PC so the power from PC and they use the left view so this is the left view interface left view so left view is a powerful software you can configure your hardware or your data acquisition system together to for data acquisition. If you don't use that view, you can use other, you can use MATLAB, you can use any other software, but that view is very useful for communication between sensor chips, data acquisition. So you have two AD7746 has two AD converter. So they use one, this is for shear force, one force sensor goes to this, and FZ goes to this one. Okay, but uh, before you hook up your sensing circuit to your main sensor, you better have some way to prove your circuit can work. So we have some precision capacitor, and it is adjustable precision capacitors. We can buy it. Then you can set up the value of the precision capacitors and go through your circuit, get the result to know if your result, your circuit setup is correct. So we have a device fabricated because we don't know if it is good or not. Or not. You, you, you design your circuit, you don't know if this circuit is good or not, or not. So before you connect anything, if there's uh, something wrong, it's, it's, it's difficult to know the sensor failure or circuit failure. You have no idea. So it's better we just get some precision capacitors. We test our circuit using these directors. Directors is adjustable capacitors. So we can use MA46H120 because this vector it has the right capacitance range. It, it, it is good to use this one with AD7746 or AD7747 because they have similar capacitance range. Okay, so before we do our testing, we replace our main sensor with the voltage controlled capacitors here. So they are in parallel. So your PCB board, you can put main sensor layer. You should be able to put the directors there. Do our circuit testing. Okay, so this is the precision capacitor, precision capacitor. So before we do mains, before we put mains, mains can be here. They are in parallel or whatever, they can connect. Okay, 
Okay. So the coincidence is 0 0.35 people Faraday. Because for us, we want 0 to 8 people Faraday. So this one, 0 0.35 people Faraday, is okay for us to test. Okay, the detail. For example, if you have only one PC and you want to get the force in Z direction and the force in X direction, so you are not going to use two screens, to one screen for FZ, one screen for FX. So we just have one final output. So we can use the multiplexer. So the multiplexer can switch from FZ chip or from the normal force result or shear force result. So we can use the multiplexer to select from the analog input to our use a single line to get our input, input one, input two. So now input one and 10 seconds later, input two. Then another 10 seconds, switch to input one. So it just keep showing you all different results. Because AD7746, it has two channels. Okay. So multiplexer ADG793A is a 3 to 1 multiplexer for us to use. And the detail you can read this by yourself. See they have three say three input AD7746, 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 and one is for Fx1 is for Fz, for example, Z direction force, X direction force. So this MUX, you can switch from input 1, input 2, input 3. So you can read the data. It will show you Fx value, Fz value on your PC screen. You can use that view to control your channel 1. Now I want to see channel 1. Now I want to see channel 2. Or oh, I want to see channel 1, channel 2 together. So if you do experiments, then that view is very handy, very convenient for you, data acquisition. See, we have three input. One, two, three, the sensor. And go to this multiplexer. And this is the microchip the processor. So for the evaluation board, it has filter, USB connector, microprocessor, and one evaluation board. But if you create your own PCB board, you buy multiplexer, you buy the AD746, you have IC chips, and this is your main sensor, your IC chips. You buy the IC, multiplexer IC, you buy the microprocessor IC, and you combine everything together, and you buy the USB connector, and through your PC, your PC has the radio software. So you create your own system this way. microprocessor okay this is the LabVIEW interface 
So use the let V to get the result. Remember, conversion time is important. For his case, he, he needs one millisecond. And also, Arduino is very popular. It is a microprocessor. So you can use Arduino to do the job for you. And Arduino USB connector. Connect your PC to the board. Okay, so some detail about Arduino. Okay, right. so we have, I have shown you several cases, because without case study, you have probably, you, you don't have some clear idea how to do your own research. So that's why we need to go to all those papers to see how the other people use AD7747 or AD7746. We learn from those guys. After that, we try to create our own system for our own purpose. And now we are very lucky, we have Google. So we can go, to, you, you can get a lot of information from Google. So any problem? Yujin? Any problem? Leo. So if again any problem. No, it's not ground. Ground and shield is different. Ground is ground. Shield is a square wave excitation signal. It will drive C in plus, C in minus, and the shield. You just listen to the lecture. You are confused. So you need to, after the lecture, you need to read the PPT and also read if you have textbook, if you have the specification AD7747, just read the specification PDF file in detail by yourself. Then your confusion probably will be cleared 80%. Another 20%, you need to hands on work. While you do it, some problem will be, you do it and you you figure out something, your brain cells can fire their signal and they can connect to each other and the networking can complete while you use your hand. So it's a long, long learning process. Okay, we will continue after our break. So let's come back around 3.10. Okay, see you in 12 minutes.
Welcome back to our third hour in today's lecture. Now, it's another case from this paper. So in this paper, it's a capacitive sensor too. See, we have top electrode, we have bottom electrode, then we apply pressure to this top electrode. So it's pressure sensor, force sensor. Then we put PDMS on top of this electrode. Then, so they use this silicon, and silicon. So this top electrode is gold. And they use silicon rubber. Silicon as this interface between the probe and uh, the top plate. Hugh, could you read this? Reference capacitor will include its enclosed proximity to each individual sensor having the same magnitude capacitance, however, with an outside layer to prevent deformation of the membrane with pressure. Okay. See, this is their device. This is the sensor. But this one is the reference. They have the same initial capacitance. So if you take the differential value, then because they, they should be the same. So they're the pelotitic to this one and this one should be the same. So if you take differential of C1 minus C2, you are going to remove the periodic effects. If this is CP1, this CP here, CP here. So this one is, say, C1 plus CP. This one is C2 plus CP. 
So can you take the difference C1 plus Cp minus C2 plus Cp? Cp minus Cp disappear. So this is the idea for them to have this reference capacitor. And these are the aging holes. Because this one, they don't remove silicon dioxide between the two electrodes. So this one, you need to move. So we need the aging holes to remove the silicon dioxide between the top electrode and bottom electrode. You are the only guy who knock your head. So do you understand? So what is aging hole? Hmm. Okay. Okay, before they fabricate the device, they do finite element analysis to get the capacitance change versus pressure value. And they have different size for their design. Okay, so before they fabricate the device, they do this. Then they send to TSRI, Taiwan Semiconductor Research Institute, to fabricate their device. Okay, so this is the chip they got. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's SV24 packaging. 24 pins. So one side, 12 pins, and the other side, 12 pins, so total is 24 pins. And the fabrication step. So after the fabricated device, they use epoxy to protect the wire. Epoxy. Then after epoxy protection, they put silicone rubber on top of the, this electrode. Leo, could you read this? The, the wires. The wires were and coated with epoxy. Epoxy resin. Raising. Raising. Yunjun. Yunjun, right? Okay, could you read this? Okay, good. So they use the, the polymer pouring and curing. So after you pour your polymer here, you can use the white light interferometer by one cancer. You can measure the contour. Then you will know the thickness of the polymer. Sensing electrode, they use AD747, again, for their case. So the design here, they use the reference capacitor. So use this one, it has some benefits to avoid, avoid drift and common mode variations, because all common mode is removed by this differential sensing idea. So, see, those periodic capacitance will be removed if you have this reference design capacitor. So, it's important for you to think about. See, you use differential to remove those Drift and uh, capacit periodic capacitance. 
then I mean, could you read this? In order to increase the signal of the signal to noise ratio, the four pair of tracks from the target of the sensor array to the converters were shared by using the dedicated bit pin of each capacitor of digital converter. Remember, shielded the track they used. You have the signal wire, but you need to have the tracks, tracks to go with. So one pair. So you have signal. You have one pair, one, one, on one side and the other one at the other side. So if you have four, you have four sensor. You need to have four pairs of the tracks from the socket to the sensor array. Important, in order to increase the signal to noise ratio. Otherwise, all your signal will be noise. You cannot get the real signal. You will get noise. So all your effort, all your time, money spent will be wasted if you only got noise. So don't get noise. Okay, I'll put here. And uh, the commercial sensor also has output here. So you know, okay, I'm right. See, the loading probe and the servo controlled micrometric transition stage. So this stage is servo controlled, like linear motor, to control the movement. You can use your hand. But if you have the servo motor, it's better to use the linear motor to do your job. But always you can use manual to, to change the position. Okay, so any problem with that paper? The pressure sensor. Any problem? Okay, and another one is also a capacitance sensor. Like this is the one electrode, and another electrode here. So one electrode, you have gold around this inner electrode, and this is outer electrode. You have many sensors. And you, this is a droplet, water droplet. So they use this droplet. So this is a sensor, you kill the sensor. And then the droplet is going to go to the lowest point. You kill this way, the water droplet is going to go this way. So this sensor is the inclination angle sensor. See which way you are going. So this is the inclinometer sensor. Martin, could you, do you understand this principle? Inclinometer, the operational principle. Uh, is it the same something like gyroscopic principle? No, no, because see, this droplet, if it moves to other position, then you are going to have capacitance change. So no capacitance change. But if this one goes here, if the capacitance now is C1, so suppose this is air, but the water comes here. Now it's not air between them, it's water between them. The dielectric constant, because capacitance Kaiser, do you understand? Yes? No. No. You don't understand. Eugene, do you understand? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. See, this is the OF photo. 
the micro cubes, the bumps, to this surface become hydrophobic. So this is 100 micrometer, the scale. And the scale here is 100 micrometer. See, this one is small scale, this one is large scale. So we can see the bumps clearly. So you know the variation of capacitance is around 4 femtofaraday. See, AD7747 is good for 0 to 8 picofaraday. But now the change is only 4 femtofaraday. So, but in this case, they use AD7747. So it means even the change in capacitance is very small for pentofluoride. Still, this circuit can sense the small change. Right. So they use AD7747. So this is the SMB, SMB. They don't use a shield in this case. Still, they just connect C in class and ground. They just use two wires. But it's better to use a shield. This one. Connect to the shield. This is Chinese character. So from mainland China, this paper. For this device, if you the device you, you do the experiment in vibration, so the wire is going to go around. So it's important, you need to use, maybe at least use some tape to fix the wire. Otherwise, if the wire goes vibration, you are going to pick up noise, vibration noise, pyrotic noise. So a lot of noise will come. Noise, we always worry about noise. Fix the wires in the circuit board. The circuit board cannot be free to move on the surface. You should fix the circuit board, also fix the wire. And also the conversion time, one minute. This is long. For one measurement, it, it, it takes one minute to do it. One minute. Okay, we finished that one. This is another one. So at least do you have uh, any question for that case? Now this one is uh, accelerometer. So this is the shuttle mains. So if you acceleration this way, this one is going to move. And they use the fingers and other capacitors to measure the capacitance change due to acceleration. So this is anchor. Enter your engine. So your name please. This is anchor, this is anchor, and the shuttle mains connect to the anchor through 4 dip B, 1, 2, 3, 4. So do you know what the anchor is? Anchor. 
固定点、锚点、anchor， and this one can move. So this is the oil portal. So the technical, they see here, this area, here, this is the B. This one B, this one B. <laughs> not clear. So not a good photo to show on the paper. Then the key point is the capacitor sensing. The shuttle mass here, you have 4 db 1, anchor here, 4 db 2, 4 db 3, 4 db 4, connect to the anchor here, anchor here, and shuttle mass move this way. We have another fingers, see, you look at this one. So this one is fixed, this one is fixed, and this one is connected to the shuttle mass. So this one can move, this one fixed, this one fixed. So this one fixed, this one fixed, and this one connect to the shuttle mass. So this one will move back, left and right. And also, they for sensing, and this one for driving, for driving, means you apply DC and AC signal to move this one into vibration, to test the re resonance frequency. You can 1 hertz and measure the out displacement, 100 hertz measure the displacement, 1000 hertz measure the displacement. You will know which frequency this device has the largest vibration amplitude. Then that is the resonance frequency of the device. So when you design your device, also you need to think about testing. If I design then separate from this sensor, then I can use them as an actuator for testing my resonance resonance frequency. So driver, 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 sensor, sensor. I mean, do you understand? Okay, so this one is the schematic. So it's CS1, CS2. Then the initially CS1 equal to CS2. But uh, after vibration, acceleration, being moved this way, initial configuration, deformed configuration, move this way, CS2 increase, CS1 decrease. Binjun, do you know why CS1 increase, CS, uh, CS2 increase, CS1 decrease? This is CS1. CS1. Initial. This is CS1. After. Before. After. So do you know why CS1 decrease? Because the gap increase or decrease. The initial gap here. Now the default gap. Is the gap larger or smaller? Larger. So capacitance equal to epsilon A divided by gap. If the gap increase, capacitance decrease. CS1 decrease. CS2. So, yes. So CS2 increase or decrease. Get, get decrease or increase? Decrease. So the capacitance increase or decrease? Okay. So this is the differential sensing. 
and why we all we go for differential sensing because we want to remove the common law effect, the positive effect. That's why we go for differential sensing. Uh, could you read this? Do the maze. So C1 increase, C2 decrease. Then output voltage, you take this this one. This is minus Vs, this is plus Vs. Then you can do the maze, you can get the result. Output voltage equal to C1 minus C2 divided by C1 plus C2 times Vs. So this one is related to the displacement and the displacement is related to acceleration. So A4 paper. Can you everyone has A4? Okay. Write down your name and your student ID and do the derivation. Here. And if you have problem, you can discuss with each other. If you don't know how to do this, you can ask other students. Okay, for sensor, we have mechanical sensitivity and electrical sensitivity. Mechanical sensitivity is displacement. Acceleration is the input. Displacement is the output. This is mechanical sensitivity. But electrical sensitivity is input is displacement, output is voltage. So acceleration to displacement, mechanical sensitivity. Displacement to voltage output, electrical sensitivity. So for the shuttle mass is N, you have the suspension B, spring constant K, you have air, air resistance. So you have damping, and this is the PCB board. Okay, so acceleration A and N is the shuttle mass. So this is the force due to acceleration. Then the force is applied to this mass. Then the spring constant, if force is F, spring constant K, then the displacement is x. We ignore, assume there's no damping. So we have f equal to ks, f equal to na, ks equal to na, ks equal to na. So k, if this is a simple candidate will be f and the displacement. So F divided by the displacement is spring constant. This is the equation. Okay. So this is mechanical sensitivity. Meters per G. Acceleration is G. Meter is the displacement of the shuttle mass. And we have four, four dB. One, two, three, four. So the total K is the spring constant. We add the four spring together, we get a total spring constant. So the mechanical sensitivity, remember, Na equal to Kx. 
So Ma equal to Kx. So the mechanical sensitivity is one G nine point eight meter per square second. The total shuttle mass is here, and the spring constant is this one. So Newton meter is the spring constant. This is meter per square second, and kg. So kg times meter divided by second square. This is Newton. So Newton divided by Newton divided by m. Okay, so Ma x equal to k. K is Newton per meter. And Ma, M is kg. A, C, 1g equal to 9.8 meter per square second. Kg meter per square second equal to Newton. So Newton, Newton, cancel out. Eventually we have meter per G. So this one is the mechanical sensitivity. Vijay, do you understand? Do you understand? Ah, so good. Do you, you understand this one? Yes. Okay, good. Now, electrical sensitivity. We want to get displacement. Capitance or voltage, anyway, here is capacitance sensor. So, Bento Faraday divided by micrometer, electrical sensitivity. So this one, the shuttle maze, we have uh, So derive this one. So D is the initial gap. We usually we have this capacitance. The capacitance here, if we move this way, for this case, lateral movement, it move this way. The capacitance over that area will be different, but uh, we can derive the displacement versus capacitance change. Let me derive for you. If we have one. One set capacitance equal to epsilon a divided by gap b. The gap, the gap is b. But this one, if this one move this way, epsilon, then a is the thickness is t. So the overlap initially is L. But if it move this way, x. So the total overlap, it move this way, L plus x times thickness t is the overlap area divided by b is the gap. So this is the c here. But if we have n1, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
we have eight one fingers. Total for each finger, we have two capacitors. So you need to use two and one. So the C1, nine. Total C1, sigma, total. Two and one. Epsilon. P plus X divided by D. But we want to do partial C, partial X. Partial C, partial and X is the displacement. Partial C, partial X. So the result is 2N epsilon. 2N epsilon. Sorry, this is a lot. Plus X times T. So partial C, partial X is 2n epsilon t, 2n epsilon t divided by d, 2n epsilon t divided by d. So this is the electrical electrical sensitivity. So this one, epsilon 8.86, 10 to minus 12 Faraday per meter. And one, one or at all fingers. And thickness, 4.5 micro. Gap, 1.25 micro. So you can get electrical sensitivity. So, after you do, yeah, do you understand? A little. If you want to know more, you can ask. Okay, you can ask them. Yeah. Usually, we ignore this one because the gap is too large. So if this one goes in, usually the area is small. The gap is too large. So we don't consider them. Okay, so the total sensitivity equal mechanical sensitivity multiplied by electrical sensitivity. See, mechanical sensitivity, electrical sensitivity, micrometer, micrometer, cancel out. We have beta Faraday divided by acceleration G. So this is the total sensitivity of our acceleration sensor. Acceleration convert acceleration to capacitance. But uh, when we design our device, we design the gap. See, for, for this device, it will move this way. When you do the testing, you increase the acceleration. 1G, 2G, 3G. But uh, if the acceleration is large, this one will hit this one. Then your device is damaged. So you need to know what's the acceleration you can apply to your device. Okay. So you know your distance between fingers, the maximum range you can move, the body by mechanical sensitivity. When you do design, final element or analytical modeling, you know your mechanical sensitivity. Mechanical sensitivity, this is the total range, maximum range you can move. Micrometer, micrometer, cancel out, you get G. So this is 60 G is the maximum value you can apply. Depends on the design of your device. And factor of safety. Factor of safety is important. So in this case, they use 10 as the factor of safety. So 
maximum allowable 6 TG, but factor of safety, you take 10 to be safe. So the maximum is 6 G. So you know, when you do testing, probably you cannot go more than 6, 6 G. And sorry, your your name please. Xin Yao. Xin Yao. Do you know what is factor of safety? Safety factor. No. Okay, so if I want to lose my weight and uh, the doctor tell me if you lose your weight five kg you will die. Okay, so now I want to lose my weight. So every day I will go to the scale to measure my weight. But I don't try to lose my weight 5 kg. Because doctors tell me if I lose weight 5 kg, I will die. So I will take safety of factor 5. 5 divided by 5 equal to 1 kg. So I will just lose 1 kg to be safe. So that, that is factor of safety. So in this case, 60 g is the maximum acceleration by design. But to be safe, you take safety factor 10. So 60 divided by 10 is 6. So you, when testing, you, you, you just want to test 6 g. Okay, it's 4 p.m. So, 164. So, if you want to stay, it's okay. But if you want to, you have something else to do. It's okay for you to leave. Okay? But I will continue. I will finish this chapter. But feel free to go back. AD7747 for this testing. Okay, so we have covered this block diagram. Okay, calibration is important. So, Kyler, could you read this? AD7747 is not a quick calibrated for the test to offset so it's user's responsibility to calibrate the system that has to offset in the application. Okay, so calibration. You can go to reference 4 and reference 9 to look detail about the calibration, offset calibration. Continuity test, which means you need to use OM or white light interferometer to check your device to see if there's any electrical contact or any anything wrong with your device, or you need to apply voltage to see the continuity if positive electrode, negative electrode in the ground. Are they connected? Are they broken? Continuity test. When you get your device, you can do that. Use your probe to apply some one volt and to see if everything is correct. So, Ami, would you read this? A primary method of testing the sense device is to check the discontinuity between finger and different layers. Continue. This test provides information about proper stu structure of finger and foot device and be easy to be shorted out. Okay. But, okay, LCR meter test. You can measure the resistance between two electrodes.
the resistance should be very high. If you the C in class and ground, you measure the resistance. If the resistance is small, means they are connected. Switch is not right. So you can use impedance sensor or LCR meter to measure the resistance before you before we go to TSI to do the testing. So LCR meter you can measure inductance, capacitance, resistance. In our lab we have an LCR meter. The low level is LCR four two three five. But we have high level we have key key side impedance sensor. You can measure very small impedance. So you can measure the device. And tip test. If the circuit PCB board is not ready, you can use the breadboard. You can put your device on the breadboard and this AD7747 to quick testing. So what is PIP test means you rotate your device. So if this is the direction of acceleration, gravity 1G, you'll get some output. So if this is 0G, the device, if the device move this way, so you have, we designed the device to move this way. So if you put your device this way, there's no displacement. I can get the bang there. If you put your device this way, there's no movement. So there's no output. But if you rotate your breadboard this way, now, this is the direction for sensing. You have displacement. So you, you have voltage output. So this is what we should do. If you don't have your PCB board ready, just use the breadboard to do simple testing. And also, we should buy the directors, voltage controlled capacitors. You put them on the circuit board, uh, breadboard, and do test your AD7747. So tip testing we can do in our in your lab in our lab. We don't need to go to other lab that have the shaker or whatever. We can do simple tests to test our accelerometer. And also you can measure the offset by tip testing. If you know your offset, you can you can after you get your result. You just minus the offset value to get your real output. Okay, so offset is the zero error. If there's no acceleration, you have output value means that's the offset you have. Then you have the sensitivity, sensitivity, pico Faraday per G, electrical. No, this is total sensitivity. Then you can do kind of. Could you read this one? The test data is selected for each position when accelerometer is at plus at plus one g and minus one g position. The offset and scale factor values are calculated from the data. Okay, so your breadboard, you put it this way, there's no output. You put this way, you get 1G output. You put this way, you get minus 1G output. Okay, so you have three measurements. Just rotate your breadboard, your device. Martin, do you understand? Okay, so 1G, 
plus 1g divided by 2. This is the capitance output from 1g. Capitance output from minus 1g. Then divided by 2 is the offset, common mode offset. Then 1g minus, minus 1g, differential mode divided by 2. So this is the scale factor. Just, just, just do some single, simple. Do you understand? Okay. Okay. So, d g and one g and minus one g. Okay. You can do simple testing. Thermal test, because temperature will influence the displacement or influence your circuit. So temperature is a problem. So we need to do thermal test to see capacitance output versus temperature. So thermal test to divide design. So this is capacitance, capacitance in Y and uh, temperature X. So you change the temperature, you get different output. But for the sensor, we hope at different temperature we have the same result. We don't like we want the, the same. If we put the device in one G, twenty degrees C, we test the capacitance output. We should have the same capacitance output when the temperature is twenty five degree. Otherwise, different temperature, although the same excavation, but you get different result. Ah, do you want different result? No, right? So we need to find out the thermal variation to calibrate our measurement result. So the thermal drift for exometer is so you your measurement range say twenty two to forty three degree. So the degree Celsius and the reading this value this value you zero point zero one oh four five minus zero point zero one oh five divided by the total temperature range is the thermal drift. So when you publish your paper say your exometer, you need to show tell people the sensitivity, resolution, also the thermal drift, nonlinearity. You need to publish all the data. Okay? Then his research test say Okay, for example, thermal drift. You increase your temperature. You measure your result, the blue line. But you go the other direction. You decrease your temperature. For the output, they don't follow the same. Probably it's a little bit different. So this is hysteresis. Hysteresis. The good sensor should increase decrease, follow exactly the same line without hysteresis. But that's impossible. We have mechanical device. You go, you increase the deformation, and then you decrease the deformation. Probably they won't follow the same pace. So hysteresis is inevitable. So when you do your testing, you need to Say this is temperature, but you can do acceleration. One, two, three, four, five, then six, four, five, three, two, one, see if they follow the same pace or not. For four sensor, one newton, two newton, three newton, four, five newton, then decrease. Then you need to measure the hysteresis effect. When you publish your result, you need to tell your readers 
What's the hysteresis test of your device? So hysteresis is percentage change of full range. So this is the full range. And this is the change. So percentage change of your full range. This, this is how you calculate your hysteresis. I mean, do you know what is with hysteresis? Zai. 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 Do you understand? Again, do you understand? No. Ahem. No. No. Do you understand? Now, finally, the vibration test. This is the shaker. And the wire. The breadboard. <laughs> they just connect to the shaker signal. To the... So this one. Might be go to AT747. And this one is the director. Maybe. I don't know, I'm not sure. So we put a device on the shaker for the vibration test. But they just do 0.5G, 1G, and 1.5G. Although you take safety effector 10, it says, okay, you can do 6G, but they are very careful. They just do 1.5G. Okay, this is the interface of AD7747 evaluation software. So, it will give you output peak of Faraday. The average output RMS noise. See, it's going up and down. So it has noise. And peak-to-peak -peak noise. RMS resolution. Peak-to-peak -peak resolution. And uh, conversion time, you need to select. Also, you need to do error deviation analysis for noise analysis. So, error deviation, this is a reference for alien deviation. When you measure your output, you get time response. You can convert based on the alien deviation technique. You can create this chart, sigma versus tau chart. And we have the slope. By measuring the slope, it will tell you the alien deviation. You have quantization noise. Means analog data, you, if you, you convert analog data to digital data. But during this conversion, you create some error to the device, to the measurement. So this is quantization error. AD converter, analog to digital. You are going to lose, create some error in, in this conversion. So this is quantization error. Do you understand? Error. E-R-R-O-R. Error. What's your money? Quantization error. You can hear You can hear If the, when tau is very small, you can get the quantization error. And uh, in this sigma to tau curve, you look at when the slope is minus one over two, you can get angular random walk error.
Okay, that's all for today.